Hello, I'm Adam Malloyd from PSC Consulting, and today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to how we model a fault ride through study using the simulation tool Dixlent Power Factory. This example uses a large synchronous generator, which could resemble a large gas generation plant. So, fault ride through, or FRT for short, is only one of very many studies that must be completed in order to meet grid code requirements. So a generator must be compliant with the relevant grid code before it is allowed to energize and connect to the electrical network. So what you can see here is a graph that represents a typical FRT requirement, which would be found in the grid code. So the figure you look at would depend on the type of fault and generator, you know, whether it's synchronous, wind turbine or PV, and also which country you're working in, as the details can differ slightly in different countries. So the graph shows the lower limit of the voltage where the generator must remain connected during and after the fault, i.e. if the voltage at the connection points above the line, then the generator must be able to ride through the fault and remain connected. So it's worth also mentioning that this type of study can be known as a low voltage ride through as well as fault ride through studies. So why do we need to complete fault ride through studies? Now, the simple answer is that it's part of the grid code and you have to demonstrate compliance before the network operator will allow you to energize your site and generate electricity. So more specific reasons for a fault ride through are as follows. It's to ensure that the generation remains connected and stable during protection operating times for transmission system faults, present, prevent a voltage collapse during transmission system faults and ensure appropriate recovery of active power following fault clearance to prevent a frequency collapse so let's take a look at a ready-made model in action. Um, for this one, we're going to look at a 350 MVA synchronous generator connected to a 400 kV grid supply point. In this model, you can see that 400 kV connection point at the top, which represents the wider 400 kV transmission network. And at the bottom is the generator, which is connected at 20 kV. And between the two, there's several circuits and the transformer, which creates the rest of the network. So this model looks very simple. However, there's a large amount of dynamic modeling data built up in the background. So it's of major importance for the modeling data to be correct using the manufacturer's data and to represent the actual response of the machine. So we'll not go into it here in full detail, but a couple of highlights. Um, this screen represents a lot of the physical electrical characteristics of the machine which should be provided in the manufacturer's data. Of particular importance for a dynamic study such as fault ride through is the rotor inertia, as this affects the machine's resistance to acceleration. I.e., when the grid side voltage is lost during a fault, then the electrical torque applied to the generator is lost and the generator accelerates. So if the generator inertia is high, then it will accelerate more slowly and is more likely to ride through the fault after the fault's cleared since the generator will remain in synchronism with the system. Also extremely important is the plant's dynamic data models. In this example, we've used standard IEEE models, which are built into DigSilent, and the parameters have been tuned to match the real generator response. So for this type of study, the automatic voltage regulator, or AVR, and power system stabilizer will have a significant effect on the results, so must be an accurate representation of the real device. For this example, we're going to use this model to demonstrate a voltage drop to 0% retained voltage for 140 milliseconds, which is one of the studies that need to be done to make grid code compliance, meaning that a zero impedance fault will be applied at the grid connection point, causing the voltage at that point to drop to zero. And this fault will remain there for 140 milliseconds. Then we clear the fault, representing the protection circuit breakers tripping and continue to run the model up to 10 seconds. So to model the 0% retained voltage drop, we need to create an event in DigSilent with a zero impedance fault at the 400 kV bus bar, and then create a second event that will clear the fault after 140 milliseconds. Then after that, we simply initialize the model and run it up to 10 seconds. So within DigSilent, we've prepared graphs to see the output of the study. And the main three things that we're looking for from the results are, primarily, does the generator remain connected? Does the active power recover to at least 90% of the pre-fault level within 500 milliseconds? 
and is reactive power injected during the fault? So if we look at these outputs from Dig Silent, we can check if it mean, meets these three requir requirements. Firstly, does the generator remain connected? If we look at the generator voltage here, we can see that it drops during the fault and recovers following the fault clearance. We can see some initial in overshoot due to the generator speeding up slightly, but the voltage settles down because the generator remains in synchronism with the grid. Secondly, is there active power recovery? If we look at the generator power output here, it can be seen that the generator remains connected during the fault and active power recovery occurs within half a second. So there are oscillations, but these are permitted in the grid code as long as the energy delivered is equivalent to 90% of the original active power. And finally, we can see from the generator Q graph that the generator delivers reactive power during the fault. So this is a single fault ride through scenario. Several other fault ride through scenarios must also be investigated, looking at different levels of retained voltage for longer periods of time, and also different faults such as two phase and single phase must also be investigated. Uh, this has been a very basic introduction as to how we at PSC use modeling in fault ride through dynamic studies, which are a critical part of making sure that power systems can withstand and recover from fault events, which is one of the many ways that we help clients with power system studies. Find out more on our website, including this blog post dedicated specifically to fault ride through. Thank you for watching. Thank you.